Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to the channel. Um, today, we're, we're, there's not going to be any uh, photography, actually. This is more like a discussion about uh, some of the beliefs and the way I feel about uh, photography. And uh, I think I'll uh, label this, this uh, the essence of a photograph. In, in order for any of us to understand what a true essence of a photograph is, I think we first have to go all the way back to the mid-1800s where the photography thing first started and, uh, and, and, and do some research. It... Uh, and, and start learning where where all of this began, where it evolved into different aspects or different types, and where it has ended up and where it's going, possibly going. So history is very important. In, in I think any any anything if you really need to uh, figure out or understand the true meaning and the and the true essence uh, the the of of whatever it is you're doing in your hobby or or or, or you know or your art it's a I'm I'm holding you know I'm holding my uh, Zeiss contacts to a it's, it's it's there's so much history there it's got history in itself so the history of the tools the history of the makers of the tools the history of the lenses the history of the makers of the lenses not just watching youtube channels and reading books and and uh and and gleaning your information by people that are using other famous people and their names to explain the philosophy of photography and stuff like that it's you got to really be careful you really need to we all really need to be careful on where we're getting our information from what we believe and what we don't believe the uh, using using other photographers, you know, older older photographers from the past and showing their photography and stuff like that. I I don't think there's much anyone better at doing that than Joel Ulysses. Uh, when 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 that site first started, you just got basically a. Uh, a, a introduction and uh, and a slideshow of their work and and a, a few uh, statements from the people in that and it's turned into uh, more of an explanation and a verbal talking about the photographers but what photographers are are a lot of people talking about Joel Ulysses has been one of my favorite favorite places to go to uh, see other photographers and what their styles are. But even though there is a lot missing from that, it seems it seems that uh, when 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 photography what I've been learning lately is when photography first started to become an art form, we had the pictorialists. Now this is the 1800s. And what they were doing is uh, the these is they were copying famous art. They were to the point where they were actually dressing people up and posing them in the scenes and taking photos of them uh, until kind of the art community said, "Well, you know, it's uh, you're just copying our art." And so then it slipped back into like a realistic thing where. It is an untainted, untouched, negative. 
copy of the negative, basically a contact sheet or whatever they were using, that became the art, simply because from that, we got to see nature as it was, nothing unchanged, and we started getting a glimpse into the photographer's actual eye or the essence of what those photographers were doing. Soon after the contact thing, you know, it's, it's quite a, from what I'm understanding, we're breaking way into the 1900s, early 1900s. The enlargers uh, came into play and the manipulation uh, Ansel Adams was uh, was was the greatest the greatest teacher of uh, manipulating your, your negatives to your vision so the essence of his photographs are not what he photographed is what he felt the photograph should look like because the dodging and burning and stuff like that, it, 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 you know, which led into Lightroom. That was his essence. So a true art, no doubt. But uh, if you have a look at these things and the, these, these people, most of the people that were true artists in, uh, the, in, in, in photography, shot medium format and you don't hear so much of that we we get bombarded with this 35 millimeter format thing we we get uh, totally bombarded with it, it, it you know excuse excuse the mess back here i don't want it to get off subject but i'm, I'm in the midst of actually pulling an old vintage lens apart and cleaning it all so uh back to the subject they we all seem to be focusing a lot on the 35 millimeter photographers now a lot of these 35 millimeter photographers uh, that uh, were quite famous to me uh, personally i feel they uh they were documenting they were doing you know uh, uh, quick shoots uh, or, or, or traveling abroad and doing magazine shoots. And so they were using 35 millimeter. And uh, they were very good photographers, uh, like uh, Steve McCurry. Uh, one of the best portrait photographers I've ever seen. It, it's just amazing. But it, it's, it, it was, but his photography was for magazines. He took the photos. He, uh, and that was it. That was his job. His job was to take photos. Very good at it. But uh, the, they were for magazines. And, and then we get into this uh, kind of a debate, in my head anyways, between this uh, Brasson, where he calls himself the de decisive moment or the magnum photos. It seems that this magnum photos, when, when, when they came in, they kind of took control of stuff and started making idols and it became a quite clicky thing you oh, you you can't be part of this or you can't do that and and they started kind of controlling the who's who of photography brisson from what i am seeing when you turn all the noise off and all these people telling you he was uh, the decisive moment guy they were staged a lot of the photos were staged and, and admittedly staged the uh you know, and he took a lot of photos, yes, uh, and, uh, way back when, right? But th that doesn't exist anymore. You know, those times don't exist anymore. All the they, all the photographs that have been taken on these streets are all just repeat photographs now. There's no essence in any of these photographs. You know, even even with the with the guys with the thirty five millimeters, everything was thirty five millimeter. It's just too much thirty five millimeter. When the real artists and the real pros, even the real a lot of the press photographers were still using large format and medium format cameras. Fan Ho was a medium format. Uh, uh, you know, he used a Roloflex. You can see a lot of his stuff. 
the uh, Vivian Myers. Now, when Vivian Myers art was discovered, there was a lot of fight uh, there for a while. They didn't mention it much, but there was quite a few guys, even commented, the, the people that have these kind of talks, even they were saying, does she belong as a professional photographer? Well, no. Well, you, well yeah. You, you look at her photos, and every one of those photos was, to me, a perfect example of interaction with, with the people and then shooting at a decisive moment. If there was any photographer from the past that should have an award for the decisive moment, it should be Vivian Myers. It's, there, there's no doubt about it. Every one of her photos that we are being shown are, there's an essence in every one of her photos. There's an essence, not just staged or shot and, and stuff like that. There was an essence. There, it, it, it was just a feeling that you can feel. And you immediately when you see them, you know them. So it's kind of hard, I know, maybe for you to follow me, but what I'm trying to get at here, I'm not the highest educated person, but the uh, we've lost that essence. A lot of us have lost that essence. The uh, And I think it all started with a lot of this Magnum photo stuff and then went into the street photography stuff where guys were you know, flashing in in people's faces and to get expressions and stuff like that. The, uh, that has evolved into now. I, I'm pretty sure if you walk down a street in New York, you're going to probably see about 400 guys <laughs> with cameras taking 2,000 photos a day of trying to get something, you know, swinging their cameras down low where the camera's doing all their work and just banging off 2,000 photos of a computerized, you know, gadget that's doing it all and then trying to pick something from all those photos that might be good. There's no essence in that, if you ask me. I'm sorry. I, I, I cannot condone the uh, 2,000 photos a day, uh, all electronic and, you know, I've got SLRs, eight, Nikon D810, that's where I stopped right because there's no real feeling for me in that I can take photos of meaning but there's always the urge you're always coming home with 200 photos no matter what it just it just happens that way when you've got these digital cameras and and you're trying to capture everything it's so much easier just to take a whole bunch of photos right now we step into the 35 millimeter and we got 36, 36, right? So that slows you down a bit. So I would, I would actually myself think that about maybe four or five or six of the photos I get off of a roll, I really have an essence or a feel of what's going on. The others are just like a robotic what I've learned and what I've taught myself to see in a style that I just point and shoot because I see it and I shoot it feel it it's all quick and over with and I, I believe because I because digital was big for me that that's what digital has done so I'm trying to repair that now and we moved into the medium format and a lot of the older cameras where there's no meters and and stuff like that and 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 feeling the history of the cameras and the makers of the cameras the makers of the lenses and what they had to go through to make the lenses and 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 uh, you know it just just the reason why they made these cameras so we end up now with the contacts, uh, Zeiss Contacts 2A, uh, a whole bunch of folders, Zeiss icons, Voigtlanders, lots of Zeiss. I've got lots of Zeiss and Voigtlander old 
30s to 50s cameras, the folders, and definitely the Nikon F. Everybody knows the story. If you don't, then I'll tell you really quick. Since I was a young kid, in, in uh, you know, probably about four years old in the doctor's office, Nikon F, I was looking through all those magazines, and Nikon was always there. Their advertising worked, I guess, because it, 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 it is engraved where it is a part of my childhood, and this is why I've collected up almost every lens for that F system that uh, that that's made and there's this like I said there's probably about six more or something like that to go but I've done so much studying in how the lenses were made and 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 what the the makers went through back then that you soon come to realize that there is a lot of old Zeiss in almost all the lenses <laughs> there it, it, it you know back in the 50s and the 60s and the, the 70s there's a whole lot of Zeiss going on there the, you know they're, they're taking Zeiss designs the double gauss the tessars and the triplets and stuff like that and they're just adding to them and refining them but they were still the old Zeiss you know a lot of sonars uh, a, a lot of uh, you know tessars and whatever you know the the opton the opton sonars of these i just love the look of the opton sonars the old opton sonars because they were the original so we step up into what nikon did with bronica they made all these lenses for the bronica s and the s2a they those also have a lot of sonar and and stuff built into them so they have that look more refined they have that look and so it ties my bronica together with my nikon and 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 it ties it so 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 deeply in my roots that i want to get the 400 the 600 the 800 and you know, possibly the 1200 millimeters uh, lenses that will work on the Nikon F with the focusing tube, then also be able to put it on my Bronica S2A, which is over here, my medium format. And uh, most of it is because back then I really believe that Nikon and Zeiss really the developers of those lenses knew the essence of a photograph and knew the essence of uh, what a photographer really wanted and and did not work for total perfection but worked in the favor of the photographers you know as their artists they they would not release anything so that was their art they would not release a lens until it met their idea and vision an essence of what that lens should be doing for the photographers so that's why you see a lot of nikon stuff right and 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 zeiss stuff because to me those were the guys so then now we get into the photography again most of the art that we seen and Zeiss, Zeiss Icon, they were the largest manufacturer of cameras, but it was all medium format cameras, medium format, and they they never the pro professionals never used thirty five millimeters. They only broke into the thirty five millimeters in the thirties with the first contacts uh, cameras and stuff like that to to break into a market that was lucrative and to. Uh, you know, to fill a, a, a hole that was only being filled maybe by Leica and a few other, few other camera manufacturers. And so there was a separation between the artists and the 35 millimeter shooters. It was a totally two different things. Artists were using large format and medium format 
Uh, 35 millimeter sh shooters were basically commercial shooters, documentary shooters, you know, the quick shooters, go, get the job done, send the stuff in and let the, uh, the uh, editors and that find, pick the photos they want to use, write the story, done, right? So uh, they were very well educated people, very good photographers in what they did. But is it art? Yeah, it, to me, yeah. The essence of those photographs doesn't tell you anything about the, the photographer taking those photographs. So that's where the line kind of draws for me in the essence of photography. The, uh, when we're out shooting 200 or 2,000 photos a day or trying to take a picture of a bird flying by where we're popping off 20 shots a second, all in perfect focus, focusing on an eyeball with perfect lenses that remove everything that might be bad, which ends up being steamroller photography. It looks like flat. They don't look the same as the old ones. There, there isn't much essence in there. There's just narcissistic, I'm going to get the best photograph I can. I don't care if I pay $20,000. I'm going to get a good photograph. So I guess there's a place in the world for that. But it's just not my thing. So I'm slowly moving towards putting more and more feeling into my photography and bringing more and more of me out in my photographs for the essence of the photograph. So that's why you've watched me slowly move more and more towards film. It's, it's a search that I'm personally doing for me. I do my photography... And this quote came from Mr. Patrick Hollins. I do my photography for myself. And when, when, when he told that to me, to me the other day, I thought about that and I said, yeah, you're right. I'm doing photography for myself. I'm not out doing photography to impress everybody that's watching the channel to go look at me. None of it is an art, a narcissistic, uh, uh, you know, it, it's 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 just me out shooting different stuff and showing you the results, and and of the of the different lenses. But we're evolving now into as you notice that we're I'm not posting that much anymore because I'm trying to slow down and bring myself out and catch up. So my photography has the essence of me, the essence of the scene. So when you look at the photograph, you're going to notice something. You're going to notice the essence of the whole thing that is me, not a manipulated AI you know, bunch of crazy instamatic push a button hit auto. I, I want I want everyone to see and I, what I'm showing you because this is actually a personal vlog. I want everyone to see what I'm seeing and how I'm seeing it and what I'm feeling and, and my educational journey that has taken me all the way into some Japanese philosophy now and, and uh, photography that... Uh, doesn't have to be in focus, doesn't have to be exposed properly. In fact, there's a lot of artists out there doing, doing expressionism where people would faint if they seen it. It's all blown out and all out of focus, but you can see the essence of each photograph when you look at that. So it's art. It makes you stop and look. So uh, there we go long video I'm you know rambled on I needed to say something I uh, I just 
want everyone to understand that we're taking a bit of a turn and it's a slow process on my personal vlog which is this channel of where we're heading in the future and my vision of what my photography should look like and uh, I hope you enjoy it in the future <laughs> if you're still with me now but there it is that's the that's the whole thing no music no big bang theory no uh you know, rah, 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 and this is the best, or you should have this camera, or you should have that camera. You should have the camera that whatever brings out your essence in your photography. Uh, you know, you could easily end up with a hundred cameras on your search, as you can see. This isn't a gear acquisition. This is actually, what you're seeing here is actually about 25% of my search for myself in photography my my essence my my self search this is not gear acquisition <laughs> this is dave's personal search in his art and every camera does something different it's not just a film holder so that is another thing that is a fallacy that we're being sold it's it's not just a film holder. Every camera has a different feel, functions differently, meters differently. You know, it's it's just reacts differently, feels differently in your hand, which adds to the experience. So, the thirty-five millimeter documentary guys that were very good at what they did. That's great, but the essence of their photography really doesn't do anything for me. Uh, like I mentioned, Steve McCurdy, one of the best portrait photographers I've ever seen in my life. Like, oh my gosh, right? If you look at his portrait photography, all of his photography, it was just amazing. The uh, Some of these other guys that have been famous for their photography because they showed off uh, America or something like that, well... Nobody else was doing it back then. It doesn't touch me, doesn't do anything for me. Fan Ho, Fan Ho is to me the most touching expression. I don't know how to say it, essence that I've ever seen in a photographer. So it, maybe it matches my, my idea of what that should be. But there, there was a photographer like, like that had essence. And, and he was amazing, amazing. Every one of his photographs, you could see him and what he was envisioning in those photographs. And they weren't just a great big whole bunch of 2,000 photos in a day. <laughs> right so anyhow oh and one more little tidbit ah no i'll touch on that later there's a later later one coming uh, that i'll be talking about <clears throat> you're gonna see a few more of these talking things the it's <laughs> i don't even know how to explain it myself it, it it's it's coming from feeling and stuff like that but everybody's done it. Everybody's done it. Like you look, you, you Google the most photographed places on earth and you'll see them glowing where there's worn out paths and all these people you see doing YouTube videos up in the you know, the, the Lake District or the Sky District or whatever that is, especially in Europe. A hundred million people have stood there and took that photograph. Now, you could shoot 300,000 photographs on a street in New York and 300,000 other people have taken those photographs. There's, you know, of me, I take pictures of trains. There's hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people that have taken pictures of trains. 
It's all been done. So if you're looking to, to be unique, we need to grasp the fact that it's all been done already. And, and that's that I'll touch on that on another video. But uh, the essence of the photograph is what you personally feel and see as I do like and, and I'm experiencing and growing as an artist my connection with the cameras the manufacturers of the cameras the people that designed the lenses with their name on it right like 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 you know I'm not going to start pulling off names I'm not dropping names if you want to research you know how the first uh, uh, 50 millimeter Nikon uh, lens for the uh, F system was made uh, and how the first zoom was made, you go out and you research that. It's not hard to find and you will see the, the history of that. So I research all that stuff before I go out and do the photography, before I even buy the lens actually with a vision in mind that what that person did to make that lens work like that, make it work with the camera system like that, and then incorporate that into what I'm seeing into my art, take my time and try to put the whole thing together in one essence of what's flowing through me from my knowledge. Okay, see you guys later. That might have been a little deep. Uh, if you don't like what I'm saying, well, you know, you don't have to. You feel free not to comment and bash and get all mad and upset because I'm telling you how I feel. <laughs> you, you're not me, so why anybody would do that is beyond me. It's, uh, I'm not going to conform to anybody's way of thinking. Uh, I don't need a gatekeeper showing up going, oh my God, this guy says this, this guy says that all offended and all carried out. Um, if you want to do all that kind of stuff, you can feel free to do it somewhere else. Uh, if you're interested in what I say, uh, you know, leave a comment. Uh, but uh, if you're going to start bashing everything I say in that on my personal vlog, because that's the way I feel, then uh, you personally, I think that you probably need some therapy or, or there's something going on in your life that uh, you need to lash out on people. Well, I'm not your therapist, so you're just going to get something back that you're not going to enjoy. Because I know how to deal with that stuff. I've been around for a long time. See you guys later. Keep it clean. Keep it happy. <laughs> All right.